A major storm system is set to impact the United States over the next few days with significant severe weather, including damaging winds, hail and tornadoes, all being a possibility. And this storm system is a little bit more rare because it is going to bring something that we've not seen in about a year across parts of the central and southern plains. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. We'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And right now we have a large scale low pressure system that is currently moving across the four corner states and this will bring the risk of significant severe weather which all begins this afternoon and evening with all hazards of severe weather being on the table this will continue into tuesday wednesday and even into thursday so a very active stretch of severe weather is ahead all out of this storm system and a few other shortwave troughs that we'll be watching for we've also had a lot of convection back over near florida over the last 24 hours and believe it or not there is a low chance of a tropical depression or storm forming over the next five to seven days here just off the coast of the carolina and in Florida, and we'll talk more about this in just a few minutes. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, and we'll begin with today, which is Monday. We have a level three out of five enhanced risk of severe weather in place for parts of the central and southern plains. Slight risk of severe weather goes all the way back up into southwest Minnesota and also across the Texas panhandle. And we are anticipating all hazards of severe weather to be on the table, including the threat of significant damaging winds, which could be as high as 100 miles per hour this afternoon in evening large to very large hail and even an isolated tornado or two will all be possible the greatest tornado threat for today will be our near our surface low pressure system which is going to be across parts of nebraska and as well as northeastern colorado so here's our significant wind threat for today if you're anywhere in that hatched area in southwest kansas back into the texas panhandle this is where we could see damaging winds as high as 100 miles per hour large hail is also a possibility across the great plains and then an isolated tornado or two once again near our surface low northeast colorado Colorado back into southeastern South Dakota. And then as we end to Tuesday, the risk of severe weather will continue to grow in size anywhere from the Great Lakes back into the Southern Plains. We have a large slight risk of severe weather in place where scattered severe storms are expected throughout the afternoon and evening hours with all hazards of severe weather once again on the table, including the threat of damaging winds. Also, large hail will be possible, especially in the Southern Plains. And then there is a chance for a few tornadoes anywhere from about Chicago, Illinois, back through Oklahoma City and also closer to Dallas, Fort Worth. We are expecting this to be a pretty long afternoon and evening. A lot of these storms will be very slow moving as well. So flash flooding is definitely going to become a concern out of this threat as well. In addition to the threat of significant severe weather on Wednesday, things look a lot quieter. We have two marginal threats of severe weather currently in place, one of which is in the Ohio Valley and then another one back over in the high plains where isolated hail, wind and maybe a brief tornado will be a possibility. And then as we end to Thursday, the risk of severe weather does appear to be a lot more significant, especially in the southern plains. I do think we're going to have a very intense storm system Thursday into Friday, which should bring at least scattered, if not numerous severe storms to the central and southern plains on Thursday. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out a slight risk of severe weather with damaging winds, hail and a few tornadoes being a possibility on Friday. It should be a very similar area here in the southern plains. So overall, it is going to be a very active week with plenty of showers and thunderstorms. Luckily, we do not have any sort of tornado outbreaks, at least currently forecasted, but that could definitely change, especially with the events that we are looking at later this week. So here's the timing for severe weather beginning with today. We have scattered showers and thunderstorms that will develop throughout the afternoon and evening. And though these might not look very impressive, it's really because of how dry our low levels are going to be. So these storms are not going to really be tornadic by any means, but we are talking about a significant Boeing segment of storms here that is going to produce damaging winds as high as 80 to 100 miles per hour, which the last time we had a threat of like 100 mile per hour winds in a legitimate setting was back on May 19th of last Last year, So I don't really think that this is something that you want to be messing around with. And I totally understand that we might not have much of a tornado threat down here today, but this wind threat is almost the equivalent of an EF0, EF1 type tornado, but in all straight line wind fashion. So definitely stay safe out there in the Texas panhandle back into Oklahoma as we go into the evening hours. And then by the overnight hours, these storms will still be producing some damaging winds as this marches into East Kansas, Northeast Oklahoma. And then eventually as we go into Tuesday, things quiet down, but that'll only last through the morning in the afternoon. We're going to see more severe weather, which we'll talk more about here in a second. Further off to the north in the central plains, a lot of storms are going to fire up right around five to six o'clock. A slew of storms in Nebraska will fire. And then again, a lot of stuff ongoing there in Kansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. By around seven to eight o'clock, these storms will continue to fire up here across Nebraska. And we may see a couple of rotating supercells again near our low pressure system. The HRRR is showing at least a few here, mainly off to the west of North Platte around eight, nine o'clock tonight. And then again, severe weather will continue back over in the southern plains 
lanes where damaging winds will be the main concern. And then eventually by around 10 to 11 o'clock, we got a huge cluster of storms ongoing across Nebraska. That will eventually weaken as it approaches Omaha overnight tonight into early tomorrow morning. And then things will start to clear up and that'll lead again into Tuesday's threat of severe weather. So on Tuesday, we are expecting again scattered to numerous severe weather anywhere from the Great Lakes back into the Southern Plains. We're going to begin with the Midwest and they'll go from North to South. So this is what the Midwest looks like during the morning. We got some scattered showers and thunderstorms out there in the morning. Most of the storms that'll be out there during the late morning and early afternoon will be mostly elevated. So hail and even some damaging winds will be the main concerns from Des Moines, Iowa back into Southwest Wisconsin. And then eventually as we go into the early to mid afternoon hours, we're going to see a couple of segments here of storms develop mainly back over in Iowa and as well as Missouri. This is where we're going to be watching for more of a wind threat across this area, straight line winds, but there could also be an embedded tornado in one of these clusters of storms as they continue to cross across eastern Iowa and as well as the Ozarks and central Missouri. Eventually by around seven to eight o'clock, we got a large cluster of storms in multiple different areas. And all of this for the most part will be marginal damaging winds between 60 to 70 miles per hour. With that said, you should be protecting loose line items. If you have any trampolines that could go flying, definitely hatch those down as well as flying trampolines will be a risk with how high the winds will be, especially if they're not hatched down. And then by around 11 to 12 o'clock, a lot of these storms are going to be falling apart. There will not be much left other than just rainfall, which could lead to some localized flooding. In the Central Plains, it's a little bit of a different story, and this forecast is a little bit more tricky. But as we go into the morning hours, there will be scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. Severe weather doesn't really ramp up, though, until about 2 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, mainly from Central Oklahoma back into East Kansas, where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table. But I think damaging winds and hail will be the dominant threats. I think we'll have a better shot of a tornado or two, especially back over in Central and Southern Oklahoma with a few of the supercells that are back over here in a little bit more of a warm and as well as a moist environment. In addition to that, our hodographs are a little bit more favorable for tornadoes. But the biggest problem, I think, for tomorrow for tornadoes is going to be the storm mode. All the storms are mostly going to be clustered together. So that's going to kind of hinder, I think, our chances of seeing the threat of significant tornadoes. If we had a more discreet supercellular mode of severe weather, I think it'd be a much different story. But for right now, it looks like a lot of wind and hail across the board. We should at least see one, if not two rounds of storms in Oklahoma. And then also back over in Kansas and Missouri, we'll probably see the same thing. The first round, though, being the more significant one with damaging winds and hail being the primary concerns. And then by around eight to nine o'clock in the evening, storms will still be severe back down in South Oklahoma and North Texas. But overall stuff that's ongoing near St. Louis back into Northeast Oklahoma will be pretty much falling apart after sunset. And as we go into the late evening and overnight hours, things clear out across most of the Central Plains. If you're back over in Texas or Southern Oklahoma, we'll have plenty of storms out there during the late afternoon and evening hours. This right here is pictured around 10 o'clock. So again, numerous to widespread severe weather will be ongoing here with damaging winds being the primary concern. Maybe a spin up tornado as this moves down towards the Dallas Fort Worth area. And speaking of the Dallas Fort Worth area, we are expecting storms there right around 12 to about three in the morning. So this is going to be a late evening, early overnight threat for those areas. But damaging winds, the primary concern, maybe a spin up tornado, may even have a few storms near Abilene around midnight as well. Biggest concern being hail with those storms. And then eventually, as we go into the early morning hours, these storms will continue to push down to the south, but will be much weaker as they approach areas like Austin and as well as San Angelo in Texas. Now, beyond the next few days, we are expecting our weather pattern to remain very favorable for multiple severe weather events over the next couple of weeks of June. And that is mostly because we have a large scale area of troughing back over in the Rockies and along the West Coast, which is going to help to bring some of these shortwave troughs over the Rockies and create the potential for severe weather events. The only good news right now is that our jet stream is actually pretty weak, which typically in June, our jet stream is going to be a lot weaker than it is in months like April and May, where we have really large scale severe weather events. Now, this doesn't mean we're not going to see another severe weather outbreak or tornado outbreak. It's just a little bit more difficult for that to happen with our jet stream pattern that we're going to be in, despite there being a lot of troughing. So we should see a fairly active weather pattern at least until the middle of June, maybe even beyond that, it could stay pretty active. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware here over the next couple of weeks. Severe weather season by no means is over yet. This is what the future radar looks like for the next several days to put it into more simplistic terms. On Wednesday, some scattered showers and thunderstorms will be possible near the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. Isolated hail and wind possible there and a little bit of severe weather back over in the High Plains. It'll continue to be really rainy back over in the southeast as well in Florida, where there's been a lot of rain recently. On Thursday, we're going to be watching for a low pressure system to eject over the Rockies near New Mexico. This should at least bring some scattered severe weather on Thursday to parts of the southern and central plains. Could bring a slightly more significant threat of severe weather, depending on how that trough evolves. On Friday, severe weather will continue to be a possibility once again back over in the southern plains and then another area to keep an eye on 
would be back over in the Ohio Valley. And then as we go into Saturday, that storm system over the Ohio Valley will move into the northeast with plenty of rain, not really much severe weather left. There will likely continue to be severe weather even on Saturday, just not very organized. We'll have some severe weather here across the Great Plains and another area to keep an eye on in the southeast. And then on Sunday, storms will just continue to be a possibility across many different areas, but things definitely become a lot more uncertain after Sunday. I think back over in the southeast is one area to keep an eye on, and then also back over in the Midwest, we'll have to keep an eye on for some severe weather on Sunday. But at this point, anything beyond Saturday of this weekend is very uncertain. It's going to depend on a lot of what happens here just over the next few days. But make sure you're subscribed to the channel, because if anything does happen, we will definitely let you know. And hurricane season officially began yesterday in the Atlantic Ocean, and we now have our first area of development that we're going to be keeping an eye on just off the coast of the Carolinas. Over the next five to seven days, there's about a 10% chance of development. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware back over near the Carolinas. Even if something develops, it'll probably be very weak. I think right now it's going to be more of a rain concern for the Carolinas later into this work week, where we could actually see some significant flooding rainfall along the coastlines of South Carolina and North Carolina. Otherwise, no forecast of hurricane as of right now in this area. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I'll we'll have another video tomorrow going way more in detail about the severe weather potential upcoming, so click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest forecast, and there's also a low chance of a live stream today and tomorrow, so make sure to subscribe to the channel.